Welcome to the Board Game Network. I'm talking about Origin Award uh, nomination, nominee games um, for 2016. This one here called Fuse was nominated in the Family Games category. And so I'm going to, this is going to be kind of a unique rules video. I'm going to show, show you how to play the game by actually playing it in front of you. Uh, and then discussing it while I'm playing, I don't expect to win whatsoever because this one has a fixed time limit of 10 minutes. Every game is 10 minutes. And uh, I'm not going to be able to finish a game in 10 minutes while I'm talking to you. In fact, I have a hard time finishing one in 10 minutes when I'm not talking. Anyway, this plays from one to five players and it legitimately plays from one to five. You can play this solitaire. This is fun as a solitaire game and it is fun as a five player game. It's put out by Renegade, designed by Kane Klinko. And what you're seeing here is you are, you are a bomb defuser. You're trying to defuse bombs within 10 minutes. So I've just got some cards laid out here. You'll notice we have five different colors of dice. And, of and they're just normal dice, so they got numbers one through six on them. Same number of, there's five of each die. So five green, five blue, five, five of each color. You have bomb cards. The first thing you're going to do is look through there and pull out the sixes. This number here represents the complexity of this card. And it suggests in the rules to not play with the sixes until you're an advanced player. So we're just going to pull those out to start with since we are not advanced. These are your fuse cards. You'll notice there's one of each color and one of each number on them. And then here are your bomb cards. I've just picked out a variety of bomb cards with each kind of bomb card there can be. Such as this one. You'll notice this has a, well let's just pick uh, a simple one here. Well, here's one. Here's one. And it's got a red, a two, a black, and a six. So if I'm trying to defuse this bomb, when dice get rolled, I'm going to have to put a red die there. I'm going to have to put a two there. I'm going to have to put a black die here. And I'm going to have to put a six on here. But dice are being rolled and you're, you're taking them with the other people that are playing and you're trying to work together, you're winning or losing together. This is not a competitive game, it's a cooperative game. And so you're trying to work together to use all the dice. But that's what that one does. And if you get all four dice on there, then you've defused that bomb, you discard it, and you get a new bomb card to replace it. Now, there are different rules for solitaire, different rules for two player, and then three to five players. So I'm going to show you the solitaire game, how to play it, and then I'm going to, at the end of the video, tell you how to play it with two and, or two, and then play it with three to five. Now I wish the rule book would have put a, like a chart in there to, sh to, to quickly be able to look at and tell you what the difference is, but they didn't do that. So um, let me continue talking about these bomb cards. This one you'll notice is a four, so this is a hard one, but it's got an arrow here left to right. Whenever there's an arrow you have to do it from left to right on the card. And you'll notice this is white space. Any card with a space that's white means any color. You can put any color. But you'll notice there's a number here. So you're looking at the number, you're not looking at the color. And then it's got a greater than symbol. So we're bringing in math, that means this one is bigger than this one. So this one is a bigger number than this one, which is bigger than this one, which is bigger than this one. So what you do is when the dice get rolled, you want to see if you can get a big number like a six or a five because you're going to have to put four dice on here. And you put it on this space over here. You're not putting it out here. You're putting it right there. And then when you go to the next one, this one has to be less than this one. So you want, if you got a six, you want a five and you stack it on top. And then for the third one, you want a four or maybe a three, whatever you can get. And then you want, the last one could be either a two or a one. Okay, once you've got four dice stacked up there, those are done, you can defuse that bomb and grab a new card. Okay? Now, if you ever knock down dice that are being stacked, 
there's this kind with the arrow and there's a kind with the pyramid. If you knock those over, like if you're rolling and you knock them over, those dice go back in the bag. So you lose out on anything that's been happening. So you try not to do that. Okay, you'll notice some of them ha actually have slashes. This is green slash yellow and red slash blue. So that means you can either put a green or a yellow there and you can put a red or a blue here, but you'll notice the plus sign equals seven. So those two numbers have to equal seven, but you have two different color choices. So you could put a three green there and a four red there, and that would defuse that one. You'll notice this one has black slash one, black slash two, black slash three. So that could be either a black or a three, black or a two, black or a one. And the blacks can be any number. Okay, this one shows number equals number slash color equals number slash color. So if I threw a four red there, this one could either be a four of a different color or it could be another red because the color can match or the number could match, but you don't have to match them both. And this one's just like the other one I, know, I showed you. This one says this number is the same as this number, which is the same as this number, but it's blue. So this one, you probably want to fill in the blue spot first, would be my guess, and then go for the other fours to finish it. Because once you've put a four over here, then you're locking that in to be that number for a blue dice, which is gonna be hard to fill. So you're better off starting with the blue, I think. Now this one here, this is a four complexity. You'll notice this one says color equals color equals color equals color. So once I lock in for a specific color, all the rest of these have to be the same color. So you're gonna use four of the same color, but you remember there's only five of each die uh, available. So if you grab a dice to put on this one, you wanna make sure that the other people that are playing don't have that other color being used or definitely not have two of them being used. Otherwise you'll never complete this one. Here's a not equals. Now not equals means that this one is not equal to that one in color. This says color, but it's only looking at the one next to it. So I could have a blue here and a blue here, and then some other color. It just means the colors next to each other are not the same. If you have a color not equal to a color, then you can have the color repeated in this case, because it's only looking at the adjacent cubes. And remember, with these not having an arrow, you can fill these in in any order you want. So I can grab two blues and put them there to start with. Here's one of the pyramid ones. It says red and green and then blue on top. So this left one has to be a, a red one. The right one has to be a green one. And then the top one's a blue one. And once these cards have been defused, then the dice are not vulnerable anymore. You'll notice that in the case of this one where you've got a pyramid, or in the case of these ones with arrows, once you've got some stacked on top of each other, the ones underneath are not vulnerable to be lost unless you knock them over. Same thing with the pyramid. Okay, here you'll notice that the one in the center is less than both of the outside ones. So you wanna put a small number in the middle and then you put any number that's bigger on the outside to defuse that one. And then finally, here's ones with question marks. Question marks are easy. You can put anything in a question mark, but you'll notice this one has a one yellow as the third dies. So once you put anything for the first two, then the, la the third one has to be a one yellow and then anything for the last two, and then you defuse that one. Okay, are you ready? That's the basics of the rules before I start. I'm gonna grab my note card for solitaire play. You shuffle these cards. You deal four to your hand face up. And in solitaire play, you need three different numbers across here. So if you don't get three, I've got a three, a two, a four, and a four. So that's three different numbers. So that's okay. Um, then you create the bomb deck. The bomb deck, you actually have a chart in the rule book showing if you're in training, standard, expert, elite, or insane for the number of cards in your bomb deck. Well, for, and the number of players also. So I'm gonna choose a one for the number of players and being in training, I'm gonna deal out 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I now have a bomb deck of 16. I deal five bomb cards up in the middle of the table. Those are the next cards I'm going to draw from. Then I shuffle the 11 fuse cards, mix them around, and I'm just going to take six of them, one, two, three, four, five, six at random, and mix those into my deck, into my bomb deck. So once I, once I defuse a bomb here, it's going to go in the discard. I'm going to grab another one and then flip a, a new card to replace it. So there's always going to be five available to choose from. And I'm trying to get through that deck in 10 minutes. Through this deck and eliminate all these on here. Now you do not, to win the game, you don't have to eliminate all of them in your hand. That This goes for whether you're playing solitaire or you're playing five players or however many players you're playing. Okay, you're trying to eliminate all the bombs in here and all the bombs out here. Okay, that's the basics of the game. I'm going to be I'm going to be rolling three dice at a time in the solitaire game, and I'm supposed to use all three of those dice. And I can put more than one of those dice on the same card. I don't have to spread them between cards. So I'm going to set a 10 minute timer on my watch. You can put it on your, your phone or just some way of having a timer. There's no timer in the box, but they do have a timer app if your smartphone doesn't have a timer. Okay, I'm going to set it for 10 and then go. So I'm going to roll three dice. If I ever drag four out of there, I have to put them all back in and start over. Um, I have a green two here. That's going to be hard to get. I have a green here. I can fill that one and a three and a yellow one. How can I use the, uh, here? I can put it on the yellow. Okay, then roll again. And I need a black on top. That would finish this one. And grab a new one. Flip. I still need to use these two. Uh, green, blue. Here's a blue on the bottom. And I cannot use the green. Or I can't use the red three. I don't have any place to use the red three. I actually can't use this one yet because I, I shouldn't pull it until I'm done using my dice. So, since I can't use this one, I have to roll it again. And it's red and it's a three. So if I have a three or a red, I have to lose a single dice. Whatever matches either the color or the number, I have a three blue. I'm going to lose that one. It goes back in the bag. Now I actually get that, extra, that other card and I'm rolling again. So thus, it's, e it's better to finish a card than to have more, multiple cards available probably. So I see... Ooh, look at this. I can put a blue and a green and a four all on the same card. Grab again. And let's see, green two or a five. Don't have one of those. A small number hmm. or a green. Well, I'm going to grab one of these. Here's a small number. I can use that one. I'm going to grab a yellow or a red to finish this one. So I'm going to grab the yellow, finish that one. And I can't use this black six anywhere, so I'm going to re-roll it. A six black. These ones are done, so they're not vulnerable. And I don't have a black or a six, so nothing happens. I grab a new one. I flip another card. Grab six out of here, or three out of here. Sorry. I always want to be watching for the two green. If I get a gr two green, I want to make sure I put it on that one because that one's going to be hard to fill. Ooh, look at that. One, two, three. I rolled a one, two, three. So I'm going to finish that one. A five, no. Something bigger than a two. I don't like those choices. Here could be a green. This plus this equals this plus this. Well, I can do that. 
I don't know, I'll just put them on that way. Green two, green two, no. A five, yes I have a five, I could put it here. I don't have a black for this one, something bigger than a two. I don't want to jump to a four. Uh, five, I could put the four here. That would make this one need to be a two. And I can't use the yellow one. So I'm gonna have to re-roll it. A three or a yellow. I have no three, so I'll have to use, lose the yellow. And this one goes back in, it's solved. And I like this one, this is a one. This has got question marks on it, five question marks. So, oh, a fuse, which means I lose any sixes. No, didn't have any sixes, so go on. Okay, so let's see, a yellow or a green two. I don't have a green two. I can put the yellow in over here. I'm looking for a black, that can't be done. Uh, and a three, which is the next one up, which I like that. And this one can be anything, so I can use my last die over there. Okay, no green two. Something bigger than a three, and I don't want, definitely don't want to jump to a six. A black, I can use the black here. And so I'll put that there, and this one can be anything, so I'll put the last two dice there. Red, green two, no, nope. something bigger than a three. I could jump to a five. This one needs a red, there are no reds. I guess I'll jump to a five here and finish this one. This one is all twos, I don't want this one. I already need a two over here. You wanna kinda of watch your combinations. Oh, lose a five. Let's see, which would I rather lose, this one or this one? I'll rather lose this one, I guess. You want to watch your combinations so they're not competing with each other. If you need the same thing on more than one card, then it's hard to fill it in. That would be a good one for here. Green two, I finally got a green two. And I need a red here, no reds. And I can't use the black there. Uh, but I will go ahead and put the four there. I'll use that one there. And this one will have to get re-rolled. This one is done. A green or a six, or a black or a six. So that means the black is gone. I draw me a new card. Flip blacks. Well, no blacks are out. Okay, I need a black here. This one has, let's see, green. I could put green here, or green one. That's a good one for that one. Something bigger than a four is a six. So that would complete that one. This one's here. This one goes back. Discard. Draw. I need a red. Ooh, a red one can go here, and a three or a six. That would complete that one. And I can put this one here. So, uh, I don't know. I either need a two or a black. This is a two, this could be a red. Ooh. That works out great. Reroll again. I need a blue here. I could use a red here. I don't know what I'm doing here. I guess I didn't pull that one off. I shouldn't have been stacking it. I'm getting too too stuck on stuff. So okay. So I messed that one up. But uh, I can throw that one there, I can throw that one there, and this one can't be used, so I'm re-rolling it. A six, I lose my six. This one is solved. It's gone. Flip. Three, five, four, three. There's a three, a five. 
These two have to add up to seven. Or a yellow. I don't have a yellow. So I guess I'll put that there. There's a three. There's a five. I'd rather put it over here. I can get that one done. Easier. Four or three here. Oh, those are all fives. And two blacks. I can't use a single black. Or I can't use the blacks. Blue, blue would finish this one. So that one's done. That one's gone. I'm gonna have to re-roll these. A five black, so that one's out. And a one black, so let's draw another card. Flip. Any blues? Nope. Any twos? Nope. Any fours? Nope. I actually made it to the last card. Uh, four. I need a twos here. Something that adds to seven. Uh, I need a yellow on the bottom here. There's a four, and I can use that. Okay, I need a red or threes. No threes. Here's a red. This one's going to have to have a six. I can throw the two there. No place to put the four black. So I have to re-roll it. Any sixes? No sixes and no blacks. So that one goes back in. Uh, blue is the next one here. Or a blue six. That would finish that one. For sure I'm using that. The next one is a blue. So I can put a blue there. So this one is done. Uh, I can't put the bl black six anywhere, so re-rolling that, I'm getting another six. No six blacks. So, let's grab that one. And my ten minutes are up. I actually did fairly well. Well, uh, I, if I would have completed four more bombs, I actually would have won the game. So that's how you play this game. Now that I've showed you how to play Fuse as a solitaire game, I'm going to explain a little bit of the differences between solitaire and two player. And two player, you only get two cards dealt out to you at the beginning, not the four. And when you deal, you must have at least a one or a two point card. So you can't have two higher point cards. So once you deal the first one, if that is a three, four, or a seven, three, four, or six, sorry. If you deal the first one as a three, four, or a six, then you keep flipping until you get a one or a two for each player, for each player of the two players. So then each player is gonna only have two bombs instead of the four bombs that a solitaire had. You create the bomb deck, and of course you're gonna use the two player row instead of the one player row here. You are going to deal five bombs face up, just like you did before in the solitaire. You're going to shuffle in the six fuse cards, just like you did in the solitaire. And instead of drawing three dice per turn, you're going to draw four dice per turn when you're drawing. And you're going to roll those, and each player takes two. So this is going to take a lot more coordination once you introduce more players, because you're going to have to discuss, well, I can use this, I can use that, would you like this one? I, I could use these and, and try to use all four. And then if somebody, if there's a dice that's not used or more than one dice that's not used, you have to roll them individually one at a time and each player has to lose a dice that matches either the number or the color if possible. Both players. And then you would roll the second one if there's another or each consecutive dice after the first one was resolved. And you can put multiple dice on a single bomb. So if you're taking two dice, you don't have to spread them between bombs. You can put them on the same bomb. It's not a problem. So that's the differences with a two-player game. Now, for three, four, and five players, here's the differences. You still get two bombs, two bomb cards, and but at least one of them has to be a one or two, just like a two-player game. So once the first one's dealt, you keep dealing. If the first one's not a one or a two, you keep dealing until you find a one or a two. If the first one's a one or a two, whatever the second one is, is fine. 
Then you create the bomb deck using the corresponding number of players in your row. Then you deal the five bombs face up in the middle. Then you shuffle in the six fuse cards. And then you, the players are drawing one dice out per player. So however many players you got, that's how many dice you're pulling out. And everybody can only use one die. So no two dice, no three dice. One dice per player is being rolled and everybody is responsible for using one of those dice. And if there's some left over, they get re-rolled and everybody has to lose a die matching that number or color. That hurts big time because you, you can potentially lose a lot of dice. So that's the differences between the different number of players. So I wanted to get that out there so that you can know the difference. It's not really you have to read into the rules uh, to get these differences. So once again, this is a very fun game. Congratulations to Renegade and Kane Klinko for the Origins nominee for Family Games category. <laughs>